So as far as uh, the Newton method goes, there is, uh, it's pretty straightforward. You get the, so if you were to summarize the Newton method, what would you do? You have, let's just summarize the Newton method. So supposing you were writing an al algorithm for Newton method, what would you do as step one? How do you start? How do you start? Pick a st uh, starting point. This could be randomly generated or it could be from some intuition about the problem, okay? So next what do we do? I need to know in which direction to walk. Therefore, I, ne I need my PK. PK is going to be equal to minus BK inverse grad FK. I need to compute this. This may be expensive, but I, if, if I'm doing Newton method, means I'm computing this. So I got my vector. So this was my direction. What do I do next? Okay, one answer is find out alpha. Is there a more precise answer? Or let me put it differently, aren't you forgetting something? No, not exact line search. Exact line search may not be possible. Huh? Inexact, before you get on to the bus, you need to buy the ticket. What's the ticket? Check if it is a descent direction. In other words, how do I check if it's a descent direction? Is it positive definite? If beta, if BK is not positive definite, PK is not going to be a descent direction, right? So then check BK uh, for PD. And actually first you check for this and then you compute this. Otherwise it's a waste of time. Okay, so I got my, uh, positive definite check, supposing it is done. Next, what do I do? Alpha, right? So, I should not say pick, I say compute. Most uh, popular way of uh, computing alpha is, for example, backtracking line search. It's a example of inexact line search. Right, so I got this. What do I do next? I have alpha, I have P. Good. What do I do? Go to XK plus 1. Right. And uh, I can keep doing this. What do I need to check to stop my iterations? How do I know whether I'm done? Well, the simplest thing to do is we check this, right? That is my signature. You could check uh, xk, norm of xk minus xk plus 1, right? That will, that is not exactly the signature. That is telling you, the, supposing you enter some very shallow valley, then it may uh, end prematurely. You need to check this and uh, if it is good, you end. If it is not good, which step do you go to? Step two, correct? Right, so end is one option. Step two is another option. Right? So everyone has a very clear picture of Newton method. Uh, in terms of coding, supposing I, I give you like 10 minutes to code this, uh, you have already seen the code for steepest descent, you have seen it for uh, conjugate gradient. Do you think this is less difficult or more difficult? It's about the same difficulty. There are no new steps over here. The only thing different is how you calculate PK. You have to do, you have to spend some, do something clever to calculate BK, right? Most likely, if you don't know the function analytically, you cannot calculate BK analytically. In which case, what would you do? Finite differences, okay? Everyone remembers finite differences. How do I calculate uh, second derivative of a function? Taking differences, right? So that, that's how you do it. So what do you think is um, the weakest link in this? You know, when you have a relay race, you need to identify who is the weakest runner, right? Because that determines your outcome. So who is the weakest runner in this? 
step 2 right this guy because I only wrote one I wrote an incomplete if condition I wrote if bk is positive definite then do this I didn't if it is not what do I do. So, this is the, the next topic that we want to talk about if bk is not positive definite. then what do I do? Based on what you already have learned so far, you know if you are writing this code, what would you do? The most common sense thing to do, uh, I, I should not say common sense, I would say the one of the easiest solution is to ditch the Newton method and switch to something you already know which is steepest descent or non-linear CG as depending on what the function is. I could just switch into that because there I do not need to check whether it is uh, positive definite or not. If I take minus grad f it is always going to be a descent direction. So, I could do that and after a few steps I could switch back into Newton method right. So, people do that. So, they will have a code that switches between this. The disadvantage of course is what would be the disadvantage of doing this? You lose the quadratic rate of conversion, but in this case you have no it seems like you have no choice. So, uh, one possibility is uh, drop down into steepest descent or CG or nonlinear CG, okay, depending on the problem. This is. Now, it turns out there is another, uh, there is an entire, uh, you know, family of tricks that people do. So, the book has a long discussion of different, different tricks to do. Um, so, what I am going to do is I am going to write down tell you about one of them ok and one of them is Hessian modification. Okay. So, this is uh, if you think in terms of surgery step 1 is like non invasive surgery, step 2 is like invasive surgery we are going to cut open the patient and do something a little bit nasty. Now, as the word says, Hessian modification means I want to modify it so that what happens? So that it so that it becomes positive definite. On the other hand, I don't want to modify it in such a way that I am now solving a different problem altogether, right? So I want to introduce some small uh, changes to the Hessian so that I can do this uh, uh, Newton method. Okay. So there are some tricks by which. Um, uh, first of all, you can figure out how do you know before we get to Hessian modification, I forgot to an answer one, I mean you should have asked me, how do I check whether or not a matrix is positive definite? Okay, so before, so how to check if BK is, we should have actually done this before the recipe for what to do after uh, the check fails. Okay. So, one is eigenvalues. Does that look like a good idea? It looks an expensive idea. It is because uh, eigenvalue decomposition, remember I need to calculate all the eigenvalues. It is not enough for me to just calculate one or two eigenvalues. I have to calculate all of them and what property should all of them satisfy? It should all should be strictly greater than 0, right. So, there is no inexpensive eigenvalue decomposition over here. I am stuck eigenvalue decomposition order n cube, n cube if n is a large problem this is infeasible, right. I mean what else can I do? X transpose, X transpose B k x. I should check whether this is greater than equal to 0, but what was the remaining part of the statement? Good luck with that. So, uh, here is where again uh, linear algebra comes to our help and uh, you had seen this uh, technique oops, where did it go? last time. This is we make use of this Cholesky decomposition ok. So, what does the Cholesky decomposition say that if A is positive definite Then, then it can be written as 
L L transpose or C C transpose, whatever, how, whatever notation you want. Where L was what? Lower triangular, right? L is uh, lower triangular. Okay. It's not. There is actually one more condition on it. It's lower triangular and the diagonals are positive. There's one more condition over here. And this Cholesky decomposition theorem actually goes both ways. It says if A is positive definite, then I can write it as LL transpose. And the other way is that if A can be written as LL transpose, where L has this property, that means A is positive definite. Both ways it works, right? So if A is equal to LL transpose, then A is positive definite. So option B for checking whether or not BK is positive definite is simply attempt a Cholesky decomposition of your matrix BK. If you succeed, then you can conclude that your matrix is uh, positive definite. Okay. Now that is uh, again the computational cost of doing a full Cholesky decomposition is non-trivial. Right? So this is uh, again not one of the uh, not a very nice solution to try. Okay. So now, with this in mind, there is going to be a third method that I will uh, talk about now. This is uh, inexpensive, I mean sorry, this is expensive. The third method is actually one of the most uh, inexpensive and elegant methods which I have come across. In fact, this method is not mentioned in the book. Uh, so I'm going to mention, spend some time over here talking about it in detail, okay. Not surprisingly, it's named after some Russian, so it's called the Gersh Gorin. Anyone has heard of this? One person. Nobody else? Okay, you've heard of it, right? So this, those of you who have done linear algebra may have heard of this theorem, okay? Again, most of the tricks of optimization come from linear algebra, right? So this is one of those tricks. And it's, uh, so let me just tell you what this theorem states, okay? So assume, A is, and it's a very general theorem. So take a complex matrix, okay? Now we need to make disks, represent this matrix as a collection of disks. So uh, disk I, and imagine, you have to imagine the argon plane, right? So the, this is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis. Right, everyone's familiar with the complex plane over here, real and Y is the imaginary part. So the center of the disk is AII. That means the diagonal element of that, uh, of, uh, of the, of that row or column, whatever, is the center. So you look, this is a complex number, so it will be somewhere in the complex plane, okay. What is the radius? I take this, this summation of what is this in English? Is the row sum of absolute values of the ith row. I is fixed, j is what I am iterating over, but what am I skipping? I'm uh, skipping the, the center point, right? So I've got this. So basically what you have is a disk whose center here is, this is di, with a i i is over here, and this radius is r i. How, compu how computationally expensive do you think this is to evaluate all the disks? There's no cost, it's just adding numbers, right? There is no order n cube, anything over here. And here is the, the lovely theorem. The theorem says that every eigenvalue of A lies within at least one disk It's uh, really very, very powerful, right? Because it's it's not 
it's exactly what we want in the sense that I don't want to know the exact eigenvalues, right? I'm not going to do any particular calculation with the eigenvalue. I just need to be assured what? That they are positive. So this theorem is going to help me because it's telling me the bounding box or the bounding disk within which an eigenvalue is, right? So let's, let's sort of particularize it to our case. We are dealing with, let us say we are dealing with a real valued problem. Right, so our matrix BK is real valued. So that implies that where are all of these uh, centers of the disks? They're all of the real line. So if I can draw one real line over here, this is A11, this is A122, uh, whatever. These are all the centers over here. Now this uh, row sum obviously without the centers also a real number. So what am I go going to get? I'm going to get these disks. So once I compute all of these disks, what do I have to make sure? That there is no disk which is kind of creeping into the negative x axis, right? If this happens, then there is a possibility that there is an eigenvalue here, but it's not a guarantee. It's saying that an eigenvalue is contained in this disk, right? So this Gershgorin disk theorem is telling us, giving us a very clear picture without any computational cost. Look at these disks. If all of these disks lie to the right of the origin, then there is no chance that you will have a negative eigenvalue. If you don't have a negative eigenvalue, you are in business because then all the eigenvalues are positive and your matrix is uh, also definite. Therefore, easy to Okay, so do I need to check every disk or do I, should I check only the leftmost disk? The radius of the disks can be more, right? So I can have a disk on the right with a larger radius, right? So I have to check that. Okay. But this is like two lines of code to check it, right? So it's very easy to check all the disks. Right? So uh, now, so what, what are we sort of, let me just quickly summarize what we did is that the Newton method worked if the, BK is positive definite. So how do I check whether BK is positive definite? There are three ways, expensive to begin with, either do eigenvalue decomposition, expensive, do Cholesky decomposition, also somewhat expensive. Third is look at the Gershkorin disks and make sure that all of them are to the right of the origin. So this tells us whether we are in business or not, right? Now if, let us say some eigenvalues are negative, right? If eigenvalues are negative, we have two choices, either switch to steepest descent, conjugate gradient, whatever, or do a Hessian modification, right? So now let's have a look at Hessian modification. 